Hey, what's up, everyone? My name is Lionel, and I'm your host for LT Productions, and you are watching I Watch You Watch. We are covering a la carte, which is on the all black streaming services. Um, that is every Thursday. We are on episode four of season two. Thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for your viewership. Um, I ask for everyone to please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and share this video, and please leave your comments. I love open dialogue, so let's get into it. Uh, the title of this episode is Picky Eaters. All right. So, basically, since the dudes have been picked for who's going to, I guess, bartend, if you want to call it bartending with their shirts off, it is Derek and um, Frank. So Yvette has been invited by Shira to help pump the guys up to be, I guess, something to be used. I guess the slab, slabs of meat uh, to be uh, to bring in more money. So Shira tries to oil up Frank, and Frank is rejecting it. No, 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 no. So Yvette said, I'll do it. You got to do it so slowly. So Yvette's doing her thing, oiling him down. And then next thing you know, Frank Jr. makes an appearance. So Frank runs out the room. <laughs> And at this point now, Shira is going to do Derek. Derek is, I mean, Shira is doing it, trying to oil him down. But then Derek is uh, flirting and doing all this other crap. So then Shira ends up uh, pouring the whole bottle of oil or putting the whole bottle in um, Derek's pants and says, you do it and rub it all over me. Derek says, I will. And then I'll rub it. I'll rub one out. I said, okay. So they're pulling, doing this push and pull type of situation. Shira's acting like she don't like Derek or want Derek. But... I think it's becoming more obvious that there is attraction there and a liking there. But we got to see what happens. So, all right. So now everyone's outside. Well, not outside, but at least behind the scenes. We're in the bar. Everyone's chilling, doing their thing. Uh, we find out through Frank that Derek is missing because Frank needs his help. Of course, Frank is just really showing up and Derek is normally the main guy. So we cut to a scene where Derek is in the back and he's banging out a girl. I'm like, how you do that all the clock? One thing about this show, y'all don't care about disrespecting anybody in authority. <laughs> y'all will dis disrespect everybody, meaning. Uh, so after all that takes place and mostly just calling in a night, Brandon and Shira, they do talk about having some more events. Um, they're talking about a Halloween night. Um, then Shiver gives this signal to Brandon, like she's with it. They're like it came out of left field, but through to the coaching, through the coaching of Yvette, now she's becoming this kind of vixen of, hey, I want you. So Brandon seems interested, but he just gave this look back, like you can get it. We'll see how that goes. All right. So after basically everyone leaves, uh, Yvette, Rain, and Misha, they're sitting down, still chilling. Um, Shira is basically ready to go, so she can get her project done or whatever. Um, I think it was Yvette ended up asking, so who does Shira really want? Because we seen you tonight. So do you want to F Brandon, Watt, Frank, or Derek? And then and Rain and Misha like, Derek? Ew! Because he's still the odd man out. Um, Shira didn't really give an answer, but all of a sudden they get on with Misha. She started talking about, like, I really miss the D. <laughs> like, really miss the D. But she says she got one in Corey. All of a sudden, all the men in this cast or whoever comes aboard just has all the fixings. They got the thick peens or whatever. I'm like, ain't nobody like husband D around here. Like, everybody's just so well proportioned. Just saying. Just saying. Um, yeah, so she's just ready to go on and F Corey. All right, so. We jump to a scene with Nicole, Corey, and Misha. At this point, Misha and Corey are having sex. And Nicole is sitting there bored, but she's giving out the noises as if she's watching and being entertained. Ooh, yeah, take that D. Ooh, he's stuffing you, blah, 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 blah. All that good stuff, but Nicole is not interested whatsoever. <laughs> so it's kind of a comedic scene. Corey ends up leaving, and Nicole comes back in um, the room and telling Misha, you know, you really like that? So it looks like Nicole is a full-fledged lesbian. That's what it seems like. And Misha's like, yeah, I do. And she's talking about uh, their next session. And Nicole's like, really? Uh, no, I bow out of that. And Misha's like, wait a minute. Well, he did go down on you 
uh, for a whole hour. And because it's so, she's not interested in men. So Misha's like, well, what's going to happen between us? That's why we're in this type of relationship. The non-monogamous, whatever. <laughs> so you can do what you need to do with him, and I'm going to do it. I need to do it with them. We only come together. If we're together, if we're going to add someone, it needs to be a woman. So I, I get Nicole's point, but at the same token, you knew your girl was at least by curious <laughs> at the least. So what's going on? I don't know. I, I, I just, I just have some reservations because it seems like Nicole still is calling the shots. Yes. Yeah, she is older, wiser and has been in the game. I know Misha said, you know, I love, uh, learning from you, blah, 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 blah. And that's why it seems like Nicole is more in control of this whole relationship, in my opinion. Um, so anyways, I guess Corey and Misha are going to do their thing. How long can Corey handle that? Because you're not going to be the main at all. <laughs> and that could mess with a guy's ego. So I don't know how that's going to last. Um, so Shira and Yvette, they're going to go on the double date. Um, Jamal has found a guy for Shira, but Yvette has already knocked down her attire and said, no, we need, you, you, you need something better. You need to show skin. You need to show body. Da, 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 da. Of course, Shira's like, mm, I don't want to. Like, uh, uh. She said, no, you need to be a baddie. <laughs> um, so she gives her a couple outfits to wear on this date. And I think for another uh, function that she gets, she needs to wear something different and more presentable for that. I need to be effed. Um, Zeke comes home. Rain's already there. Rain's trying to have a discussion with him, and Rain sees that Zeke's not really, really um, into the conversation. And Zeke says, "Hold up." I mean, Rain says, "What? You're, you're acting strange." And then Zeke just blurts out, "I don't trust you, Rain." Um, and he asks Zeke. I mean, he asks Rain, "Like, are you on any other apps or?" Uh, talking to any other dudes, and Rain says no. Um, and then he goes on to tell them about the video that he saw of this dude that was masturbating. And Rain was like, "Oh, so we're going through phones? Like, it's not even about that. You had, I had your phone for half of the night that you gave me, and these messages are popping up." And then Rain was like, uh, "Well, here's my phone." Then he's like, "No, I didn't see all I need to see because it's not." Rain is. To me, he's flirting with disaster. He's got one foot in this relationship and one foot out of the relationship. And he hasn't really calmed down. He's done some things as far as compromising and not on not on apps as far as even doing his escorting thing for this guy. But this other guy keeps pressing him to have his time and brain won't get rid, rid of him. But he's not truthful with Zeke. With, uh, yeah, with Zeke either. So... Either you're in or out, Rain. That's the best advice I have for you at this moment. Zeke has stated his position at what he expects out of his man. And I think it it is fair. And again, you never gave any pushback and you just... And since you said nothing, basically you're falling in line to what he said. Um, so the double date commences and we meet this guy and they have a little talk and Shiris seems a little bit interested. And then the waiter brings over a ring and says, it looks like you dropped it out of your coat. We find out this dude is married. I think he's uh, in the sports arena too um, with Jamal. So he has a wife and all that. Um, Shira does freak out, but Yvette says, come on, let's go to the bathroom. So her and Yvette, they have it out. And basically say, you didn't tell me he was married. So, so he's married and he's a guy and he's willing to be with you. Um, Shira's like, well, I don't F married men. And Yvette says, I do. And then we find out, so Jamal is a married man? Yeah, so what? I said, wow, Yvette. Wow. Wow. It's like, we're in this age of letting people be sexually positive, and there's no morals. Is it wrong to be with a married man? I think so. Yvette's getting everything she wants. So she has this, 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 a fight with uh, Shiron saying, don't judge me. At least I got a man, basically. It's like, you got to... I mean, she is getting the sex that she wants, and also she's getting all the materialistic things. So maybe she does have the best um, hookup right now. 
in the long run, is it going to work out? I don't know. But it looks like her and Jamal are in this way. But I can't say that Shira is wrong for how she feels. That's her morals. I don't think it was right for uh, Yvette to just spring that on her when you know this woman is not into that. <laughs> like, you're trying to... You're trying to get her out of the prude state and you go right to a married man for her to start uh, being an HOE. That's not cool. That's not cool. And I don't think that you should have tricked her into going out with this married man. Whether you think that they're judging or whatever. Okay. I mean, go with it, I guess. But ugh. Um, Misha and Miss DeVoe, Miss Tammy Roman. Um, basically, Misha comes in and she said, uh, are we going to be signing a contract? I thought that's what we'd be doing. Um, but you have me going back into the booth. Basically, what Misha has done doesn't sound well enough uh, for Ms. DeVoe, and you need to go back in there and do what you need to do. Um, Misha says that I wasn't really looking to get back into this. Um, and Ms. DeVoe says, you know, I just want you to go to this uh, industry showcase, show them what they never should have, uh, that, that they should, never should have messed over you in the past and still that there was um, uh, feedback from Misha that wasn't really in good spirits. And Mr. DeVoe was like, I'm glad that you told me because I don't, I don't deal with fear. Um, Misha ended up saying stuff along the lines, you know, you're the type of person that I got to really watch out for. Blah, blah, blah. And Miss Tammy, uh, Miss Tammy, Miss DeVoe says, you know, I'm going to let you slide for the benefit of your health, I said. <laughs> I know that that was specifically written for Tammy Roman. That is Tammy Roman's personality. I'm going to let that slide because I'm about to wipe the floor with you. Oh, <laughs> uh, So anyway, she walks away to let uh, Misha think about it. Corey comes in and says, you know, give Mr. DeVoe a chance. You know, I'm uh, headlining these big places all because of her. Da, 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 da. Um, Misha shows Corey her like booklet of songs that she's written and Corey says these are are amazing and you need to just give her a chance um Misha ends up telling Corey because Corey was ready to get back into the whole threesome type of situation with Nicole and Misha said Nicole's not really up to that she's not into you and he's like what how can he not be that I did all this with my tongue <laughs> no Corey she's not into you no matter what but she says you know we can go on and do what we do and he obliges to that um, Rain is getting out of the car and all of a sudden his text goes off and it's Mecca, the guy that Rain saw on his phone that was a masturbating. And he says, I need your attention for $5,000. So Mecca, after sending the message, ends up calling him as Rain is standing right outside the house by the car. Um, he really wants to meet up with Rain. Um, he says, don't, I don't really have the time. I'm I'm going to be busy um, going to this Halloween party. Mecca says that he was invited, but he is basically he's not interested and he thinks it's kind of whack. Uh, but Mecca is still determined to want to meet with Rain. Um, all of a sudden, the lights in the house, they come on and he tells Mecca, you know, I got to go. And he hangs up. And that's that on that. We'll talk about that in just a second. <laughs> um, uh, Shira ends up going to Derek's gym. And he can obviously see that Shira's by bothered. And they begin to talk, and, and she asks a question. Like, why is it hard to find someone that won't use you or won't lie to you and won't lie to you? Um, and Derek says, you know, everybody lies. And why is that? Um, to protect themselves or some lie be because there's something that they're embarrassed about. Pride. Um, and Shira says, well, what do you lie about, Derek? And he says, basically being... Uh, uh, an ish father. He's like, he already uh, feels like he's going to be a failure before he even starts being a father. Um, then Shira goes on and says, well, how did I F things up with Rodney? And Derek said, are you crazy? <laughs> like, are you serious? He says, you know, Rodney was a fool. He was doing all this stuff behind your back and didn't really take you seriously. Uh, you're the complete package. And then Shira says, how did you become so sweet? Um, he said, well, I did massage you at one point. Then the subject came up of Shira getting a massage. She wanted it. Derek starts to give her, her a massage. And then guess what? She gives in and gives him some, you know what? So they're having sex right there in the gym. And 
we got focus that there's a camera on them. So I'm guessing that this is going to have some effect for our future storyline, maybe in the next episode. So I don't know what's going to happen, but whatever. Um, so Shira goes back to the club or bar or whatever. And, oh, this is the next day. Um, they're setting up for Halloween stuff now. You see the pumpkins or whatever. And Shira looks very still bothered by something. And then she asks Frank, uh, do I look like I would sleep with uh, someone else's husband? Um, Frank says, I don't know, but but you know no one cares if you do. Um, humans are complicated. And Shira's like, yeah, parents can be complicated. Um, she starts talking about like she only had a mom. Her mom did, and her dad didn't want anything to do with her. Um, then we notice that Brandon is, is listening to the whole conversation. And he comes over and says, both, the, both of you are fortunate to have the parents that you did have. He ends up saying that he didn't have any parents. Um, he was in the system. And I think up until he was like 16 years old or whatever. So be grateful for what you do have. So and then he goes on and says, you know, we need to get back to work. Da, 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 da. And Shara hangs around and says, uh, why did you lie like that? And Brandon said, I didn't lie. <laughs> you know, um, She says, I've been around here for months and you've never said that. We said, for one, I'm your boss. For two, you're, we're not friends. So why would I tell you any of that information? Um, but I guess it was still good to hear Brandon open up about that in Shira's eyes. So now it's uh, the Halloween party. Of course, all, all the gang basically shows up. Ray ends up telling the ladies uh, what happened with Zeke. And they basically get on his tail and says, don't F this up with Zeke. You better fix this. Da, 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 da. Um, Rain is in this um, uh, Black Panther outfit, but he's got a, like a cat suit for him or whatever. Um, so he's out in the hallway and some guy brushes up against him. Like, and we find out it's Mecca. Mecca is still interested in Rain and they almost lock into a kiss until Shira shows up. Um, Basically, now Mecca has walked out of the room, walked out of the room or whatever. And Shira's asking, have they seen Misha? Rain says that he's got to go. It's itching and all this good stuff. Now, did Rain go follow after uh, Mecca? I don't know. So the next day, um, Shira and Frank are there. Um, next thing you know, a woman comes in the door. And Frank says, you know, we're not open as of yet. And... I think he is of saying Miss Sheila. Miss Sheila, which turns out to be Shira's mom, <laughs> says, uh, y'all trifling, a uh, daddy finally wants to come around. Is that what's going on around here? So then Shira comes in and says, what? What's going on, mom? You're not supposed to be here for another day. We're finding out that Frank and Shira are related. And it looks like through their father. So we're on a heck of a ride right now. Episode four was a lot of twists and turns. Hopefully you did enjoy the episode. I did. I like what's going on. But let me tell you something. What's going on? There's only five episodes this season. Next week is the last episode. And I'm saying, what? I don't know what's going on with All Black, but we needed at least the standard eight episodes because there's a lot to, to tell. I think that this season is really shaped up. I was so nervous at all the recast and dumping of characters, but you guys have really turned it around and made it into something pretty cool. But I'm just griping now because I ain't griping next week. <laughs> but All Black, you need to increase them episodes, please. Come on. Well, anyways, that's all I got for this episode. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for coming to my channel. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, share this video, and give me your comments on this episode. Until the next one, peace.